Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining us today, Harvard senior and recipient of the 2022 Women's NCAA D1 Elite 90 Award, we are sitting down with Felicia Passadin. Felicia, how's it going? Yeah, it's going well. Um, it's been kind of a whirlwind after NC2As, but it's been nice to get a little break from swimming and just digest it all. So I'm doing pretty well. start there. That's a great starting point. And then we'll kind of work our way backwards. What has the whirlwind been like post women's NC two A's for you? Yeah, I think just, just coming back and being met with all of my teammates, um, was, was really, it it was a wonderful experience just because I'm so used to having meets where I'm traveling with all of my teammates and at NC two A's, it was just my, my one diver teammate and myself and my coaches. So coming back and getting to celebrate with my teammates, it was also my 20th birthday right after NCAAs. So I celebrated that, um, which was really fun and a lot of like preparing for commencement. So even non-swim, non-academic related things, just kind of like logistically, um, it's been kind of overwhelming, but in, in honestly the best way, I think there are so many fun things yet to come. So, um, yeah, it's been a, it's, been a good journey so far ever since I came back. Well, I love that when I reached out to you to schedule this podcast, you were like, yes, I can do it. I have, you know, 115 to 230 available (laughs) this day and 240 to 315 of it. You know, you had very specific windows and it it made it very obvious that you keep a pretty tightly packed schedule, which I I think a lot of college students do, but um, you can tell, you can tell you're doing a lot. And, uh, you mentioned, you mentioned it, you just had your 20th birthday. You're you're graduating college (laughs) Uh, in a couple months after your 20th birthday, which is, um, in large part, what this podcast is going to be about. I spoke to you at NCAAs right after you had been awarded the elite 90 award and that interview got deleted. (laughs) And so (laughs) this is a bit of a redo again. I appreciate you coming on. So let's get into this. Um, you're awarded the elite 90, you're graduating in just a couple months. Mm -hmm. Um, How did that come to be for you? And was that always the plan to graduate Harvard in three years? Sure. So I would say no, no, definitely coming in as a freshman in, I believe that was the fall of 2019. My plan was to swim and be a student at Harvard University for the full four years, like no questions asked. That's was my plan. And then to go to medical school in the fall of 2023. That's what I thought my plan was. Um, And then we got sent home from school suddenly March of 2020. And over the summer, uh, I started thinking about my AP scores from high school, as well as weighing the uh, recent financial aid package that had come out from Harvard. And I started realizing that because of the work I put in in high school, because I had a certain number of fives on my AP scores, I could actually be granted a few blank credits and be able to graduate in three years instead of the typical four, allowing me to save, honestly, a lot of money, um, get another degree. So I'll have a master's degree before I enter medical school um, and be a little bit closer to home as well for that, that added year before, again, still the plan is to attend medical school in the fall of 2023. But um, it really was because of the COVID pandemic that really changed my plans and allowed me to see what else I could do. Um, And it was both a mix of predominantly financial, like saving a lot of money, but also an academic decision that I thought was best for me. So yeah, a a few questions just off of that answer. Uh, In high school, (laughs) how many AP classes did you take? How many fives did you have there? Um, By the end of high school, I had nine fives on my AP exams. (laughs) Did you take- so it was definitely a busy high school career. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, gosh. How did, how did you manage that? I mean, I'm sure there'll be high schoolers listening to this in, in that boat of, you know, full AP courses, uh, full swimming training, right. Which is very time consuming. Um, how did you find ways to manage all of that? I mean, nine APs throughout high school. That's, that's a lot. 
Right. So I also, to add on to that, I was also a three sport athlete in high school. So in the fall, I did cross country in the winter I swam and in the spring I did track. And then in the summer I was doing just like a mix of things, I guess. And, um, also carrying a very heavy academic workload as well. But I think I just developed really great time management skills, not only from watching my sisters. I have three older sisters who also had kind of um, busy academic loads in high school, but also just learning small things like um, getting your homework done in, in one class, maybe so that you can sleep extra 15 minutes that next night and then be more productive the next day. So just lots of little things that I picked up as well as I just have such um, support from my family and friends that if I needed something or I was having a bad day, it was very easy to just go to my mom and dad or my sisters and, and ask them for help. So um, really, it, it wasn't just me. It, it was like a, a, a product of my, my own hard work, but also my surroundings as well. Um, yeah. And any advice for high schoolers watching this would just be, um, yeah, find out what, what you prioritize most and um, think of a t kind of time management and figure out your priorities. And um, yeah, you, you can really do anything you set your mind to. And because I was so in love, Love with running and swimming and just I was a very curious and always have been a very curious person I think um I was just able to balance it all in high school yeah oh, I'm so glad we did this podcast you were a three <laughs> sport athlete in high school you yes. took dozens of AP classes um so three sport athlete in high school was that all four years how, how did you get into track and swimming so in it also it all started actually in middle school because in middle school I went up for the cross country team in seventh grade and it was kind of just like a knack for me. I think I had endurance. I was able to kind of be light on my feet and I just really liked the sport. So then I kept that going with my, with my swim career. And then I did compete all four years of cross country. Um, my final track season, I was injured. I was, was unable to compete, um, for a senior year. And I did deal with some injuries throughout high school, but, um, yeah, for the most part, I was a three sport athlete all of high school. And, um, Still to this day, I love running. I did a half marathon over the pandemic. I'm doing a 5K this Sunday. Like it's still a big part of my life, even though at the collegiate level, I'm not like still competing with running. Um, and then I think the two sports just go hand in hand a little bit. Like running helps swimming, swimming help, helps running, cardio, endurance. So um, yeah, I've always loved all three sports. When you were doing, when you were in cross country season, when you were in track season, were you swimming at all during those seasons, especially at the club level? You know, did you have a club team you were competing yeah. with year round? Um, yeah, no, I was training. I, I wouldn't call it like full time. It was definitely not no doubles. I was never doing doubles during the um, seasons where I also was running. And I wouldn't, wasn't doing uh, any competitions of any sort, just because every Saturday there was either a cross country meet in the fall or a, a track meet in the spring. So I guess, yeah, there was some swimming thrown in there um, for sure. But then, you know, that caused the, the winter, the beginning of the winter season to be a little bit of like a game of catch up. But I was always able to be in shape and, and ready, ready to go by the time like February championship season rolled around. So um, even though it was challenging, it always worked out and I always had fun with it. So. I love this narrative, particularly because you, you don't, you're not like a sprinter, right? You don't just hop in and swim the 50 hundred free. You swim two fly two back four I am. And, um, I think traditionally, you know, a lot of people say you have to dedicate your mind, your mind, soul, and most of all body to training year round doubles swimming. If you're going to achieve at the highest level in those events, and you obviously did it a little differently, which I think is awesome. Um, so when you would get to the swim season, you, you said you would play a little catch up. How did you decide that swimming was what you were going to pursue collegiately? Yeah, that's actually an interesting question because I was first only being reached out to by, uh, schools for running. So when my times weren't, so junior year of high school, um, in the fall, I didn't have like a junior national cut. I had some recruitable times, but definitely not at the level of schools eventually that I was able to talk to um, later in the recruit process. So at first I thought maybe, you know, I was going to possibly run in college. Um, and then I had a kind of a, a, it was a really, really bad day. I actually just stepped funny on a stick and had a stress fracture in my fourth metatarsal on the bottom of my foot and was walking around in a boot for eight weeks. And it kind of occurred to me that I didn't know if body wise, it was sustainable to run 
four years at the college level, um, especially if I was looking at division one schools. And then not only that, but I proceeded to go on and have a fantastic junior year swim season and really find just even another next level of love for the sport. And um, then I started getting recruited more for swimming and, and following those lines a little bit um, more steadily than I was the, the cross country and track recruiting lines. Um, and then from there, it, uh, I was looking at a lot of Ivy League schools and um, yeah, Harvard was, was ultimately kind of the dream and it was everything I wanted in a school. So ended up swimming for Harvard and here I am now. <laughs> uh, again, <laughs> I'm so glad we did this. I'm learning so much. Your junior season, you didn't have a junior national cut in swimming. That's skip, correct. Skip to the end of your senior season. I'm interviewing you in Irvine. First time I ever talked to you because you won a junior national title a year yes. and a half later. Uh, <clears throat> goes to show you kids, um, you never, you know, you never know what's going to happen. True. <laughs> uh, that's, that's so cool. So you, you get to Harvard, mm-hmm. um, again, and your, your three years in Harvard have, have been so unique to most people's as well, because first year you have the pandemic second mm-hmm. year, you go back to home to Ohio because the Ivy league doesn't have a season. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about that, that year and how you had kind of already made the decision, I believe to do this three years, but how that affected, you know, you as a person, just being away from the team, being away from the campus, doing online school and training on your own. Definitely. Yeah. So you're right. It's definitely been a very unique journey through, through my undergraduate career that most student athletes probably will look back and not be able to recount a story like mine, but Right. So I had a very successful freshman year at Harvard, um, was loving the team, doing very well in school. And then NC2As was canceled. I went home. And at that time, I thought it was really the best of both worlds. I thought I get to attend Harvard and be close to my family and like live it up every day at home. This is really great. Um, And then I took organic chemistry over the summer as a pre-med requirement. And that went well. Um, And then getting into the. (laughs) Said no one ever. Organic (laughs) chemistry went well. (laughs) <laughs> yes, Sorry. I give you two, two thumbs up on OCHEM, but I know others would have different <laughs> opinions. Um, and then, yeah, in that 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 next school year, so at that time, that was my second year of college. It um, it was really an exhausting and very lonely, lonely year. So not only was my workload very excessive because of the path I had recently chosen. So rather than having maybe two hard classes and then two classes that were a little bit um, more relaxed, I was taking full, full loads. And it was, it was extremely difficult for me um, time-wise, as well as I just was feeling extremely like distant from my teammates. And it, it was honestly a, a very depressing year and difficult to get through. But then I studied for the MCAT all of last summer, and that was also not a fun, fun experience either because it was seven hours a day studying alone, taking practice exams to prepare for that big day in August. But um, that test went very well, and I'm very happy with the work I put in and how much work I put in over my classes last year, I think only lended to building the skills necessary to be a good study, um, a studier and a good test taker. And ultimately, I think every day on campus senior year has been infinitely better than the days spent at home in my room doing Zoom school and um, basically sleeping, eating and doing school in the same room was was a little bit too much for me. So um, it's it's taught me to be grateful for every day here, which I think is really special. But it definitely doesn't um, take away from the fact that I was giving everything last year and it was challenging for sure, mentally, physically, all the way around. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, it's, it sounds like a lot. I'm sure it was a lot. And you, uh, I don't think you touched on this, but uh, you were training by yourself, right. It, throughout yes. all that as well. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't touch on the, on the athletic portion. Um, I had like a club team I was training with, but, um, a little bit in and out. The problem was, was the club team times didn't always go well with like my labs and all of these section discussions that I had for school. So a lot of the training was on my own. And that was also, I mean, any swimmer who's swam on their own for four or five, six weeks, that's miserable. And then think about it for a year training on your own. So, um, yeah, lo- love to be back with the team now because I had it freshman year and then it was taken away and to have it back now has been really incredible. 
So before we get to being back with the team, I want to back up just a little bit. You have three older sisters. Did the, what are the age gaps? We are all about two years apart. Um, and let's just say at the end of June, we will be 26, 24, 22 and 20. Okay. Yes. Uh, did they, were they also really athletic? Did they play the same sports as you, different sports, no sports? So I have my two oldest sisters names are Selena and Vanessa, and they chose to run in college. Um, So they didn't do what Cassandra and I did. Um, Cassandra, the sister closest in age to myself, swam actually for Harvard. So when I was a freshman, she was a junior on the team. And then when I was in the Zoom school year, she was actually captain of the swim and dive team. Um, So it was really nice to have her as someone to rely on. And she was a great, she also did backstroke. So we sometimes do in the same events and, um, it was, I treasured every moment I had with her on campus because it was really special. But yeah, I would say all growing up, my sisters and I were um, always in different sports seasons and having a fun time with it. So I think us four all were able to share that, that bond for like a love for athletics um, when we were growing up. Wow. That's, that's awesome. And so then are, are they all in med school now as well? Uh, what, what are they doing? So my oldest sister is a first year dermatology resident at the Cleveland Clinic. And then my sister, Vanessa, is a second year med student at um, Toledo in Ohio. And then Cassandra is a first year med student at OSU College of Medicine. And then I will TVD where, but be going to medical school in the fall of 23. I asked that facetiously, but I guess I should have known that oh. yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> the we're all in there, med school. There will, be, <laughs> they will, there, there will be four Dr. Pasadines. So yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, wow. What a family. (laughs) Are your, are your parents doctors as well? My parents actually met nursing. So they were both both nurses growing up and then they, um, did some travel nursing stints together when they were like in their early twenties and then they settled down in Ohio. And, um, yeah, so my dad is still a nurse now. And I think the fact that they were into the medical field definitely influenced us. Um, but Yeah. So we all have like a lot that we can connect with when we sit at the dinner table. That's for sure. (laughs) Okay. That's again, just cool backstory. Great great to know what a family. Uh, So then coming back to Harvard, you get back back on campus this year, get to be with your team Um, again, kind of your, your only second year with the team, but you're also a senior. Can you, can you describe the dynamic or, or the, the role that you felt you had on the team this year in that kind of precarious position? Sure. I think you can't really count out um, last year over the Zoom year, though, as a, a year of leadership building because we had like a team Slack and a team group me and a lot of team meetings. And I was organizing sometimes. Um, I was also the kind of diversity, equity, inclusion officer on my team all throughout last year and the beginning of this year. And I was organizing like group speak, a speaker series for our team to be able to uh, at least get together on Zoom call and learn about people different from ourselves. And so I wouldn't say I felt like only a second year um, coming into this year. I think I had already kind of felt pretty seasoned and like I knew my role on the team. And um, yeah, I would say I was able to provide still really great advice to the underclassmen, um, despite having only swam for Harvard technically for for one year. So even though the transition might seem like I still might have been uh, like loose footing or not not known who I was on the team, um, I think I was I've I've always been passionate about my my leadership roles and being a leader on the team was still um, felt very natural and important to me. And so then the swimming itself, um, what is your favorite part of swimming it, like in the water? Not, you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, the teammates or the team, you know, <laughs> not, not the, not the mushy stuff. Like, but you know, you swim again, you swim middle distance. I am events. You can basically do every stroke. Um, what is your favorite part of, you know, when you're in the water, what do you enjoy most about swimming? I think I love that when you dive in for a practice, it's up to you to make yourself and your teammates great. Like it's what you want to put in that day. And that's what you get out. Like if you want to swim aerobic through a threshold set and then say, okay, I'm done for the day, then that's fine. 
or you can give those 2100s aerobic threat or anaerobic threshold, like every single piece inside of you that you have and push your teammates to do the same. Um, and I, I've always loved challenging myself, whether that be on the track or on the cross country field or in the pool. And so I think I love being able to dive in and just take control of my practice and, um, yeah, motivate my teammates to do the same. So on that note, uh, you get back with the Harvard team. I had the pleasure of, of, uh, filming one of your practices in November this year. Um, tell me how training went this year with being back with the Harvard women. It was, I mean, I had just grown so, so just like, like, I guess being so distant from them for an entire year, I was longing. Like I had a very strong sense of longing for them. So I think coming back on campus, I wanted to train hard, not just for myself, but like for them. I think as, as a Harvard team, we wanted to win the Ivy league championships this year. That was like our big goal. And every day we were putting in so much effort, even more than, than we were my freshman year, because I think we knew what was taken away and we knew how the next day could change like that. So every practice we, we were giving everything. And I think being able to look to my left, look to my right and see these women who wanted an Ivy league championship, just as bad as I did, um, was incredibly motivating. And really it was an honor to train with them this year. So then what was the postseason like for, you You know, can you take me through Ivy's and NCAA's obviously two very different meets, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, energy wise for, for you personally and for the team. Um, But, you know, you you put on all this hard training with the Harvard women and what do you feel like you got out of it at the end of the season in championship meets? Sure. So Right leading up to the uh, big Ivy meet in late February, uh, we had vowed to be in a COVID, what we called a COVID bubble, which meant sacrificing um, questionable social situations or sacrificing friends who we knew had just either been abroad or traveling and saying, I'm sorry, I'm in a bubble because I have a really big championship, very important meet that I cannot be COVID positive for. So there were a lot of sacrifices leading up, but then um, come Come the Wednesday morning when we knew there were relays that night and no one on the Ivy team was positive, we were, uh, I mean, just already on cloud nine. And we said, if none of us are positive, then we can definitely do it and get the work done. Um, and then Thursday prelims was honestly incredible. We had like four girls in the A final and the 2 am, and we just knew it was going to be a great meet. And we also kind of had a strategy. We had eight of our girls in the 400 IM on Friday, which was super unique and maybe even questionable strategy, but it went very well. And getting to jump in the pool with those girls at the, at the end of the meet, knowing that we had one was just the best feeling in the world. And then I think NCAAs was just a whole separate question because my mind was solely focused on really leading, leading my team to this Ivy title that I hadn't really thought about NCAAs until I made, saw that I made the cut line and was like, okay, time to think about this meet now. So I didn't really know what to expect um, when I, when I got there. And I think um, some people warned that it would be very intimidating or scary or not the same like team hype. But um, saw some familiar faces on deck and my parents were able to be in the stands and all the support that I was getting, like even on my phone from a distance from my teammates. I had a ton of fun at the meet and um, it went even better than I expected, like getting a personal best team record in the 400 IM and dropping from Ivy's in the 200 IM. I just thought it was a great meet. And obviously the Elite 90 Award was extremely unexpected, but um, yeah, both, both meets were in different, for different reasons though, um, really incredible experiences. And the fun doesn't even stop there. <laughs> uh, so you made it through this season and now you are grad transferring to yes. Ohio state. You're going to do your master's there. Mm-hmm. One of the other questions that, that, that was brought up by an answer you said a while ago, we're going to circle back now. Sure. What is what is the advantage for you of getting this master's heading into um, medical school? You know, obviously not a requirement or a prerequisite, but, you know, to you, what's what's the benefit of getting that master's before? Yeah, I think there are two two major benefits, one being financial, one being academic. So from a financial perspective, um, 
the Ohio State STEM team is paying for my degree. So I'm getting a, a free degree, right? And all of my undergrad in only three years worth of tuition. So from a money perspective, it's really awesome. I'm saving a whole year on tuition and getting um, some extra letters behind my name. And then from an academic perspective, I think it's just a chance to take one year and focus on something I am truly very interested in. I did some research back um, a few a summer or a year and a half ago on like kind of neuroethics and the the moral implications of uh, brain devices in clinical trials. And I since then have been really interested in bioethics. So it really just made sense for me. And I think I'm going to learn some valuable takeaways before I go into medical school that I'll even use there. So like I said, from both perspectives, it really just made sense. And then of course, added bonus, I get to swim for another year. Uh, okay, so for the lay people, bioethics, what does that mean? Sure. So it, it's definitely a, a multidisciplinary type. It's, it's hard to put in one box, but it's not only looking at the moral and ethical implications of, um, of yeah, beginning of life. So like neonatal or, or a mothers and babies, but also like end of life ethics. It looks into conflict resolution as well as like ecological concerns in re relation to medicine. So it really takes in, oh, as, as well as law and public policy. So it kind of, like I said, is a very interdisciplinary um, subject that will hopefully lend itself to a successful medical school career as well. Yeah. Do you, you said you had done a little bit of research and you were excited about, you know, getting this one year to look specifically into this. Do you have an area of focus within bioethics that you think you will gravitate towards or study, or it's pretty open at this point? Yeah, I think the, the classes so far that I'm really interested in are all the ones related to, to medicine. I've never really been like a law and public policy type girl. I think government is great, but it's just not entirely for me. Um, but yeah, everything relating to, to med the medical field has been really interesting, as well as specifically related to neurology and cl clinical trials. So like Parkinson's patients and Alzheimer's patients and um, what are the what are our kind of um how, how do we help treat them and what are the ethical implications of that? So I think that's kind of my area of focus at the moment. Okay. Uh, so that's the academic side of it in terms of swimming. Uh, you're going to the, I think that three time defending big 10 women ch yeah. championship, uh, women's team. Um, and, you know, coming off a performance where you scored at NCAAs and led your team to a conference title, uh, what are you looking forward to about swimming on this Ohio State team? I think some of which you know from competing in high school. Right. Yeah. So I do know a lot of the of the girls who swim there because growing up in as an Ohio swimmer, uh, a lot of us would just kind of interact and, oh, where are you going to college? And Ohio State oftentimes came up with uh, the girls I was competing with. So I'm very excited to be able to go back home and compete with them again. Um, and yeah, I'm also just looking forward to I, I think I can already tell that the Ivy League and Big Ten experiences will be a little bit different. So I'm excited to make new friends and see what that experience is like. And of course, being only two hours south of home rather than 12 hours east is going to be like a lot nicer. I'll be able to potentially go home on weekends or have my parents come visit more often. So I'm um, just all the way around very excited for it. Yeah. Uh, so coming off of NCAAs, you know, with your Harvard career now, you know, book, book shut, um, where do you feel like you're at with swimming? Obviously you're take, you're making this decision to go on another year with it. Um, but, but are you still pretty amplified about the idea of swimming? What, what's the summer look like for you? Where do you feel like you're at? So if you had asked me this question a year ago, I would have been very scared to answer because I think a year ago, um, swimming on my own, I was already getting kind of tired of it. And I was worried that I had committed to a school and that after Harvard, I would have been like, mm, swimming's over, you know, let's time to put that in another chapter. But honestly, I'm, I'm only hungry for more. I think something really interesting that I was been thinking about this season is I was doing a lot of brushstroke training for the 200 and 400 IM, but I also started thinking, what if I tried events like the 500 free, or I was more serious about the 200 fly. I just think there's, there's a lot still to uncover that I'm excited to talk with the OSU coaches about potentially doing in the next year. And then as far as what I'm doing this summer, um, my master's degree starts May 8th. So I'm off to Columbus. Um, when do you graduate? 
So it's kind of a confusing situation, but essentially I will be moving out um, of here early May. So out of Cambridge, early May, moving to Columbus, May 8th, beginning swimming and school there, my master's degree there, then quickly driving back to Cambridge to graduate and then driving back to continue with the rest of my summer. (laughs) Man, (laughs) the loaded schedule never never ceases. Um, how far of a drive is it from Cambridge to Columbus? So it's about 12 hours. That's intense. (laughs) But it's okay. I feel like, well, I grew up doing road trips with my family. So 12 actually isn't too, too bad. I feel like that's a Midwest thing. I don't like, I'm from Missouri and yeah, it's like, we, we did road trips a lot. We had to drive everywhere. We went for swim meets. Like you, you didn't really fly anywhere. So I get that. Um, <clears throat> so this summer you're going to be training with Ohio state. Mm-hmm. How, what do you think about long course? I mean, you're, you're going to be doing a master's degree, so I don't know how much the focus will be on swimming, but do you think you'll be competing this summer at all? I guess I haven't entirely sat down and discussed with Ohio state coaches yet about it. Um, the, the kind of issue is that not only will I be doing three master's degree classes, but I'll also be doing my medical school secondary applications, which are like the essay based ones. Um, and then beginning to think about interviews, um, med school interviews kind of come September, October. So what are my thoughts on long course? Well, long course is great, but, and I enjoy training everything, short course, long course, sprint distance. It doesn't matter to me, but I don't really know where I stand with competition because I don't think that would be my main focus, but I'm always happy to jump into me if, if necessary. I just haven't really thought about it yet. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you have other things to think about. Uh, (laughs) Wow. That's, that's so much. Uh, Well, Felicia, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your very, very relaxed schedule to, to come on. um, Talk to me about this again. It was so great hearing about your life. Um, Are we missing anything? Do you have any parting thoughts before we sign off on this podcast today? Yeah. So my only parting thought is that I really do believe that I'm just a product of the people who surround me. So um, I just have the most encouraging and supportive family and the best teammates and my coaches, Steph and Amanda have really been such mentors to me throughout the way. Um, So I'm just incredibly thankful for all the people who helped helped get me here because I really couldn't have done without them. It really, it wasn't just a one man show, one woman show. Thank you for sharing that insight. Thank you for sharing all of this insight. I, I really appreciate you coming on again. Um, and it's great talking to you as always, Felicia. Yeah, thank you so much. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.